the booty bandits held a meeting. And you know who was the subject? It was me. It was three bandits that came together and said, we got to get rid of this dude. I know y'all probably thinking, what do three booty bandits got Dante name in a mouth about? You know when I told you that you got to mind your business while locked up and you should not be butting in another man's business? Well, I butted into somebody's business that I had no business butting in their business. But I just felt like I was tired of what was going on. If you, if you see evils that keep going on and on and on and you don't say nothing, then that means you, well, I'm not going to say that that means you condone it. Well, let me put it this way, y'all. Number one, hit that like button first. I'm going to wait till this car passes because it's getting kind of loud out here. But hit that like button. Oh, y'all wonder where I'm at? Well, I told y'all, or maybe I didn't, but I breed dogs. I breed Yorkies, and we're in a dark area right now. It's a plane flying up here in the clouds. Yeah, I'm out here in the dog yard right now. There's one section of my house where it's the dog area. But let's get back to it. The plane gone and the car gone, right? So if I was tired of seeing these guys oppress and take advantage of, of young, weak inmates, it's one thing where if you come to prison, and you are already um, a fruity pebble and like other men, that's one thing. But there's another thing when you're a straight man, no matter how weak you are, no matter how fragile you are, there's one thing, I'm gonna say that again. If you are a homosexual man, going into the prison system and you indulge in them type of things and it's consensual between you and that in uh, and you and that other inmate then fine this your business i can't tell y'all how to program but when you are a straight man and you got these bandits or what i call them now terrorists that go around and try to take another man's manhood from them to violate them i got tired of seeing that so I butted my big nose into the bandit's business. I'm going to tell you what happened. It was this young white guy. Dude had to be about 17 years old. 17 or maybe 18 years old. He come there on the block. No, no, no. Let's rewind it. Tuesdays, every Tuesday we get a new shipment of inmates. You will get... This one dude, I'm going to call him Bandit One. I made a video about him before. He was just on it. He was just so aggressive with it. He was at that gate like clockwork. Imagine a bus coming that way, right? He'd be, he'd be just like this. Look, he'd be like this. He'd be all up on the gate just watching. Just, just watch it like a lion. Right? Then the other bandits, they'll get together and they'll discuss who they want. Oh, I got him. No, I got him. No, 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 no. They are they already making it their job like they claiming you. And you don't even know it. There's nothing cute about a man getting turned out in prison. Especially if you are a heterosexual man. It's a lot of punks that, that runs around in the prison system. Just willing to give it up. Why violate another man? Why? It's demonic and it's evil. So I got tired of the evil. So here go, here go again, yo. Here go Tuesday morning. The bus pull up. 
the bandit number one is out there with his glossy eyes, just looking like a lion, roaming, seeking who he can devour, like Satan. He see one. Dude, like I said, white boy, 17, 18, 19 years old, in there doing a five-year bid. I don't even know what he was in there for. But whatever it was, you know, I, I, I honestly, I think that prison, and I'm sorry that I'm jumping all over the place and not keep it to the story, but hit that like button. I honestly think that certain, certain men should not be mixed with certain men, especially if you're looking at a, a, a kid that's about 120 pounds, real frail, don't put him in here with all these adult grown men that could take advantage of him, that'll knock him out with half of a punch. They setting these people up for failure. All right, now let's get back to the story. So he go to the other bandits and tell them like, yo, that's me. <laughs> Y'all leave him alone. That's me. I got him. Right? So like clockwork, do end up coming into our dorm right and this bandit was in my dorm white dude come in there i instantly shoot to him i was tired of the bs i said yo whatever you do stay away from him and i pointed him out i said dude up there i said don't look so obvious but look up there he was staring at him like an eagle right looking at his prey and I know he just probably think like, what is Dante talking to him about? Hmm, that's odd. I said, look up there, but don't look. I said, stay away from that guy. Stay away. Matter of fact, I put my arms around him like this. I said, walk with me. He kind of backed off him. I said, listen, man, I'm 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 not trying to push up on you. I'm not I'm not trying to press on you or nothing. And let me tell y'all something. What I was doing, I was breaking a lot of codes. I was breaking a lot of prison codes. And I was, hey, I was in violation according to prison politics and prison rules. I had no business, especially me being a black man, putting my hands around a white man, a white boy, and giving him the game. Y'all can call me whatever y'all want. But, yo, evil was evil and right is right. That reminds me of something, y'all. Stop committing these crimes. Go get a job. If you with people that's peer pressuring you to do things, get away from them. They're not your friends. Get away from them. Because you might end up in a situation like this story that we're talking about. So, put my arm around. I said, come with me. He was kind of hesitant, but he came. I said, listen. Ain't nobody, ain't no, don't trust me. Don't trust nobody up in here, man. What you need to do is go to that security, the booth right there, and go tell them that you in fear of your life. Tell them that somebody threatened you and trying to kill you, right? He said, I can't do it. I'll be a snitch. I said, listen, do you want to be a snitch, labeled as a snitch, or do you want to get raped up in here? The choice is yours. I'm being real, real. You're going to have to lie, okay? You're going to have to lie. You're going to have to tell on somebody. Because I'm, I'm basically, what I was basically doing was saving him from his predestination of what was about to happen to him. Either that night or the next day or the next day. I'd rather for him to go lie because a crime was going to be um, committed. A crime was going to be a crime was going to happen. So I said, okay, go to the control booth. Tell them you fear for your life. Tell them somebody threatened you. They're going to put you in a hole for 30 days. In that 30 days, eat all the food that you can eat. Do push-ups. Do sit-ups. If you don't know how to fight, just, just shadow box whatever you got to do. You got to get your weight up. You got to get your weight up. Ain't nobody in here your friend. If somebody trying to be over friendly to you and you and you see some older inmates 
trying to hang out with you, trying to talk to you, trying to be extra, extra nice. They want something from you. And I'm telling you what they want from you going to leave your mind mentally destroyed. Got you unsure about yourself. Huh? Yeah. You know what happened? He ain't listened to me. You, oh, oh, y'all thought that he was going to take my advice and do what I tell him to do. And he was going to be free. Nah, sorry. This is prison. Old boy was hard headed. So he had to learn the hard way. Right. Thus, how I got um, talked about a meeting was held against me, which we're going to get to that with the booty bandits. Let on that day, I see booty bandit number one talking to him, asking about me. And you know what this naive guy did? He told him what I said. He told him what I said. <laughs> I see him. So I'm over here playing cards, right? And I see him over there talking to him. When he told him what I said, the booty man looked at me like this. He, I could see he was staring right at me. Like this motherfucker. All right. All right. And then you want to say this white boy? All right. Oh, I got you. But well, watch this. I was also known to push that knife. Huh? See, I wasn't the roughest, the toughest, right? Nah, but they knew that when it came down to it, I was going to push that blade immediately, right? You can't go around sticking your nose in other people's business. You can't tell another man how to program. These bandits, this is what they do. This is how they get on up in there. They, they, they feed on the weak. They prey on the vulnerable and exploit them. This is all demonic activity. Hmm? Demonic activity. So he looking at me with a straight face like, Oh, uh, okay. So he went and tried to protect his white boy. He tried to disrupt what I got going on. I'm gonna see him, but he know if he had if he came to see me, that blade was gonna get pushed. And let me tell you something about these bandits. A lot of these bandits, right? They don't really want no issue. They don't really want to go. They they not going to go at. They not going to try to oppress and try to violate somebody that they know that's going to fight back. That they know that they're going to pull that thing out and use it immediately. So he knew that yo, I'm a. I gotta go holler at him, but I'm a holler at him eventually. So I'm looking at him. He looking at me. Then he start back talking to the white boy so I said alright so I'll go upstairs and go get my thing put it in my waistband came back downstairs I'm ready right say about three days later here he go we on the yard walking the yard matter of fact Let's go back um, the next day. The next day after, um, no, 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 no. We're going to say all this took place on a Tuesday, right? Wednesday, um, the young white boy was sitting with him. Just talking to him. He was with him all day. And this is what they do. This, this is the grooming process that I told y'all about, right? One of the bandits approached me. This bandit number two coming to me like, yo, I don't know what you want. You've been here long enough to know what, what's going on around here. Um, you need to watch yourself. Now, old boy said he going to give you a pass. And I said, yo, hold up. Ain't nobody giving me nothing. If he wanted to, I don't even know why he sent you over here. Because really, when I see him coming to talk to me, I already was gripped up and I was about to bang out on him. I was going to bang out on him. 
because I already know that it's on, right? I should have whipped out and banged out on him anyway. I should have done that already to come to think about it. But in hindsight, I probably wouldn't be talking to y'all right now because somebody could have lost their life. Hit that like button. So I said, look, he can come talk to me directly. He ain't got to send nobody over here. Matter of fact, I'm about to go over there to him. Right? He said, no, nah, you don't want to do that. You know, just just so he just let you know like he didn't appreciate what you did. And I said, yeah, that's cool. I know, but you know. And he like, hey man, just just be careful, man. You 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 know you know better than that. Now at this point in time, I'm getting angry because I don't I like I said, I can't tell a man how to program. I can't tell a man not to do what he gonna do. Okay. But me being who I am, I just don't like oppression. I just don't like, I just don't like prime evil. And yeah, against my better judgment, sometimes I do put myself in situations that I should not be putting myself in, whether I'm locked up or on the streets. I really got that bad. Sometimes you just got to turn your back, man. Sometimes you just got to walk away. And then sometimes you got to do what you got to do. It is what it is. Hit that like button. So now, he walk off, and um, that's Wednesday. Thursday, um, he at the table, the, the booty bender number one at the table, talking to the white guy. And this is their process. This is what he do. He groom them, talk to them, make them feel safe, make them feel comfortable. Um, later, later that day, this was the game that he played. He gave the white boy like five packs of noodles, like a bag of Doritos, and like a lot of stamps, like a booklet of stamps. And he say, hold that for me. Keep that for me, okay? White boy like, all right, cool. And he said, matter of fact, for holding that for me, you can. I, I'll let you have a couple of items for free. Just hold that down for me. This is the con right here, y'all. He sent two booty bandits into, into the white boy room. Hemmed him up, right? Punched him, a, punched on him a couple of times and then took booty bandit number one commissary. It was all a setup, right? Dirty games, dirty, filthy scoundrels. So now, Dude isn't now the white boy is in debt to Booty Bandit number one. The other two Booty Benders is in on it. This is the games that they play, y'all. Psycholo psychological mental warfare. So he, white boy run out of the cell, right into the arms of Booty Bandit number one. Man. They just did this, that, this, that, that. Who did it? Who did it? Them down there, they did it. So all apart, he go down there. He bark on them. They already in on it. They arguing back and forth. And he kind of punking the two booty bandits. But it's all an act. I done seen it time and time again in different ways. It's an act. This is, a, this is what they do. This is what almost got me. Right? This was this is what almost got me. Rest in peace. I went upstairs because they went on they, they went somewhere. I think they went to the gym. I went upstairs, I said, listen, man, they setting you up. You need to go check in right now. I was quick with it. I said, go check in right now. Dude is about to do something bad to you. He like, what do you mean? I said, you remember when I told you to stay away from stay away from him? You see how friendly he is? They setting you up. Get out of here. Get out of here. Right? He like, man, he's so all disorientated. He don't know what's going on. He just so messed up. He, he just got kind of beat up, got robbed, all that. And then here I go telling him, right? Thank God he listened this time. He listened this time. He walked right down there to the control booth and said, hey, I fear for my life. 
I just got robbed and I feel like these guys are gonna try to kill me. They pulled him, they pulled him in that control booth, right? They got him up out of there. Now here I go. Here I go. Booty bandit number one come in a pod. He go in his cell. He looking around. He come back out of his cell. He go holler at a couple people. He look right at me. Like this mother. Yo, Dante, come here, let me holler at you. I already know what it's about. At this point in time, I'm like, it is what it is. So I go up there, draw up there, right? I say, what's up? He said, uh, we got an issue. I'm like, what you mean we got an issue? He said, yeah, I know what you did. Me and you, we got an issue. We got an issue. I said, what's the issue? He said, you messed my play up. That's the issue. You're going to have to give up something. I'm like, it is what it is. You want to step in this cell? He said, no, we ain't, we ain't got to go through that, but um, you're going to have to give up something because he took my commissary with him. The guards took all my commissary. And so you're going to have to replace that. Listen, man, I know the games that these dudes play. They ain't take nothing. They took all the white boy stuff up out of there. So I'm like, I said, look, I know the games that y'all play around here. You ain't getting nothing. So we might as well just get this over with right now. So at this point in time, me and him barking at each other back and forth, back and forth. He done whipped out. I done whipped out. We, it's a standoff. We just barking at each other back and forth. At this point in time, to, hold up. Hit that like button. At this point in time, the guards starting to look up there and yo we we got our things out and no we can't get caught with them uh -uh, no way it's five years you get caught with one of them things right so we like all right all right that's a bet all right i go my way he go his way right next thing you know i'm in my cell my cell my celly coming they say yo they down there talking about you what, what was going on? I said, listen, I know what I did was wrong. Ultimately, what I did was right. I saved somebody from getting um, violated. Ultimately, right? But in the environment that I was in, it was dog eat dog, right? Either you were lying or you were deer. But my whole thing is I don't, I disagree with that philosophy. Why do I gotta live by your rules? I can understand if the if the young boy was a homosexual, right? But he wasn't. And I <clears throat> nah, it wasn't going down. Right? So he like, dude, you yo, you 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 gonna have to you gonna have to leave. You gonna have to leave by myself. Cause you gonna you bring a problem to myself. I said, let me tell you something. I've been in here longer than you. The only way I'm getting out of this cell is being carried out of this cell. Y'all hit that like button. I said, matter of fact, I bombed on him. I bombed on him. Number one, he should have never been that, matter of fact, I should have never even been that friendly. Number one, he should have never, let me tell y'all something. <clears throat> in jail or prison, You should, people should not be that comfortable to even come at you like that. He knew I pushed that blade. And maybe I was just too friendly talking to him about God and stuff and telling him to do the right things that maybe he took that as weakness and, and, and thought that I was, I don't know what he thought. But at that moment, when I bombed on him and he ran up off the cell, I said, you know what? I'm gonna kill somebody up in here. Matter of fact, I'm about to crash out. I'm already hot. So I go get my thing. 
and I come out. Now everybody already heard, heard the little commotion that was going on in the cell. So they are, and then they see my cellmate running out. I don't even know where he went, but I made up my mind. I'm about to go down there and I'm about to terrorize the pod. <laughs> I made my mind up that I was finna go down there and terrorize the pie. And guess what, y'all? There was no guards out there. I got the you know what. I came up out my cell. I said, let's get it on. I come down there. I got the whoosh, whoosh, all, all around, man. I got the whoosh, whoosh. Cut one of the bandits right here. Damn. Give him that buck 50. Well, I'm going to say a buck 10 right there. Bam. Right? Whoosh, whoosh. I had dudes running. It was people running. It was so chaotic. People yelling, screaming. Somebody whipped out on me that had nothing to do with it. I'm trying to do like this, and they trying to get at me. I kicked it off, y'all. I'm sorry. I kicked it off. I'm talking about I had him running. Another guy um, that was cool with one of the bandits, he picked up this broomstick. I ain't going to lie. He cocked me over the head. Bam. Boom. I'm like, oh. All right. Hit that like button, y'all. Let me speed this up because I got to get ready to go. Somebody working on some construction back there, and it might get too loud. I'm going to speed this up and I'm going to get up out of here. Long story short, I ended up in a hole for eight months. Solitary confinement. Ain't nothing in there but a slab of concrete, a toilet, and you get a one book a week to read. I'll tell y'all something. I didn't see the bandits no more. Right? After I did my time in the box... I got shipped. In hindsight, I could have lost my life. Luckily, I bugged out first. Luckily, I snapped first. And that rep, what I did, it 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 traveled to the next place that I went to. But you know, people add, they add to the story, they take away from the story. I was when I got to the next place, I was told that that somebody tried to violate me and then I came out with the knife on everybody. I was told that I was the bandit and another bandit tried to take my prey and I whipped out. <sighs> Furthest from the truth. I'm a heterosexual man that loves women and that's it, period. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. And stay out of jail. I'm out.